Andrew Bone, recruiting reporter for BamaInsider.com, part of the Rivals.com network is with us. Good morning, Bone. Morning. How are you, how are you doing today? Doing well, buddy. It's uh, I wanted to get you on today because there's uh, obviously we've got the second uh, signing period coming up here in a couple of weeks. Alabama wants to sign, you know, looks like five, six, seven more guys. And now all of a sudden, uh, Bone, we got a lot of upheaval on the staff. You know, coaches coming and going. Um, you know, how does that affect? And I know it happens at other places too, but it seems like it happens more at Alabama, I guess, because of the success of the program and people wanting to hire Alabama coaches. But how does that impact your recruiting when you're you're getting ready for a signing period and you've got uh, some coaches that have been recruiting kids for a long, long time that are leaving to go to other places, and then you're bringing in new coaches uh, that were recruiting for somewhere else, and now they're recruiting for Alabama. How how does all that uh, work itself out? Well, it can, it can certainly have a big impact, and uh, you know, so you always hope that yeah, that some co- that a lot of kids aren't going to base their decision on uh, on assistant coaches because uh, you know, in the nature of this business, coaches, coaches are going to you know they're going to be there for a minute, and then they're going to go somewhere else if they can get a better op- opportunity, whether it's you know, a, a position coach being bumped to a, a coordinator position or a coordinator being bumped to a head coach. Uh, you know, that's just the nature of this business. They're going to get opportunities as, as long as they're successful. And obviously at Alabama, you know, there's a lot of success for uh, for a lot of these guys. And, and they, they're able to have these opportunities to go elsewhere and coach. And you know, we saw that this year with um, with Jeremy Pruitt uh, being named the head coach at Tennessee. And, and uh, you know, we've seen guys like J.J. Peterson, uh, one of the top linebackers in the country, who was a uh, long-time Alabama lean, uh, all of a sudden, you know, Alabama was no longer in the picture, and he committed to Tennessee. Tennessee was never really involved with him, but because of Jeremy Pruitt going there, decided just to go ahead and, and commit. But before I think even even visiting up there, so uh, he took a visit to, uh, to Tennessee this weekend and uh, pretty much sealed the deal. But he, he uh, JJ Peterson, still going to come. Over to Tuscaloosa uh, this upcoming weekend, see um, you know, kind of meet with uh, with the new coaching staff. Um, and we've seen some other guys, Quay Walker, uh, currently in Alabama commitment, uh, still kind of looking at some other schools, uh, Georgia, Tennessee. You know, a lot of people think maybe he's not even committed to Alabama anymore. Now he hasn't publicly come out and said that. He still says he's committed to Alabama. Visited Tennessee this past weekend. Expected to be in Tuscaloosa this weekend, and then I go over to Georgia the uh, the following week. But um, but yeah, I mean it can have a big impact, and a lot of these guys are uh, you know they're waiting to see uh, you know, who's going to be the next coach that's hired. Uh, you know, do they have a relationship with this coach? Uh, you know, do they fit their scheme? You know, there's just so many things um, you know that go into it, and um, you know with Alabama they're certainly hoping to, uh, to to have the coaching staff set. By this weekend, because this is a really big recruiting weekend coming up. You've got the championship parade, so there's a lot of a lot of really good momentum for Alabama heading into this weekend. But uh, you know, as I said, you know they really need to have some coaches in place. So uh, with these kids and their families coming to town, they know who's going to be coaching them. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. This is going to be a huge weekend because uh, you know football recruiting can be impacted positively uh, if you've got guys on campus and you're having a national championship celebration. There's only one of those, or one legitimate national championship celebration. That'll be right here. Uh, so I know that they want to get these guys on campus. Yeah, you you mentioned Quay Walker. Uh, uh, Alabama signed uh, 14 prospects plus uh, uh, re-signed Jerez Parks. So they had 15 signees. It looks like they could sign in possibly as many as seven more. Uh, let me get uh, some feedback from you, Bone, on on guys that are are committed to Alabama, quote unquote, but have not signed yet. And because these two signing periods are so close, uh, you miss you miss them in December. You get a chance to turn right back around and sign them in February. You you gave us the latest on Quay Walker. What about Bobby Brown, the big defensive lineman out of Arlington, Texas? He committed to Alabama after uh, flipping from Texas A and M, but did not sign in December. Is there a chance that he goes ahead and puts pen to paper uh, in February? Well, I, I certainly think so. I, I think he'll. I think since the national championship game, um, and really over the last. Month ever since he uh, he flipped to Alabama, I think things have only gotten stronger with Alabama. He, he, and he's been getting a lot of uh, lot, a lot of negative feedback, uh, especially on social media from fans about his commitment. So I think it's kind of uh, added fuel to the fire. Uh, so I think he's pretty solid. Now will he you know, potentially take an unofficial visit back over to A and M? Will A and M visit him? 
Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think so. And he told me uh, you know, just a few weeks ago, he said, you know, I'm not really giving up completely on Texas A&M. I'll, I'll still give them a chance. But, you know, they're really the only school that I would consider. And, uh, but he says that he's, he's really solid, solid with his commitment. And, and Alabama visited with him on Saturday. And I, and I, I think he feels really good about his decision. I'd, I'd be shocked if he ends up uh, flipping back to A&M. One that uh, seems to be up in the air to me is longtime Alabama commitment Vernon Jackson, also from Texas, the linebacker, uh, well, athlete, but I think he'll play linebacker at Alabama if he comes, had been committed to the Tide and, and, and was thought to be solid. Then we go into the early signing period. Uh, he did not sign, opened back up his recruitment to some degree. Uh, what's your feeling on Vernon Jackson? Well, Vernon took an official visit to Texas this past weekend, and he's coming into Tuscaloosa this weekend for his official visit. Then he's got visits set up right now for TCU uh, on the 26th, and then he's going to go over to A&M on the 2nd. Um, you know, will those visits get canceled uh, after taking an official this weekend to Alabama? You know, we've seen that happen in the past where kids come, you know, they have their official visits set, and then they come into Tuscaloosa, and then they say, Okay, I'm I'm done. I'm not taking any other visits. I'm solid. So I think Alabama's really going to press for that this weekend. I'm sure he's going to sit down with Coach Saban and and Tasha Pooh, those guys, and they're going to tell him like, listen, you know, it's crunch time for us. You know, we've got to make some decisions. You know, if you're still visiting some other schools, we're going to visit some other prospects to see who's still out there that we can possibly sign because look, we're not going to get left in the cold. We've got to get some linebackers in this class. You're one of our top guys. You know, you're one of the guys that we want. But if you don't want to come here, if you want to keep on looking elsewhere, you know, we're going to look at some other guys. So I think that's going to be the message Alabama's going to give him this weekend. Uh, I think he ends up sticking. You know, he, he has a lot of positive things about Alabama, but you know, there's definitely some uh, some in-state pressure on him. And you know, obviously with him taking some uh, some visits to in-state schools, still strongly considering those uh, those programs. I think. I don't think TCU is probably as much in the pic- picture as uh, you know Texas and Texas A&M are. I think Texas probably a little bit more uh, than A&M, but in the end, I think he ends up sticking with Alabama. Good deal. All right, uh, I want you to clear up the status here because I've had some text about it, and, and particularly one this morning that wanted me to ask you about Michael Parker. We know he's firm to Alabama, the tight end from. Westminster Christian Academy there in Huntsville. The question on him is, I think, Bone, uh, is he going to be part of this class? Uh, is is he going to be a gray shirt? Uh, kind of clear up his status if you can. Well, Mike Parker did not sign, and I, I think a big reason because of that was Alabama waiting to see kind of what happens at some other positions. Uh, you know, how many more guys do we going to be able to get? Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a tie, another tight end. It's just uh, just overall numbers. You know, who, who are they able to get at defensive back? Who are they able to get at defensive line, wide receiver? Uh, and I think they'll kind of wait and see um, you know, who those guys end up being, how many guys they end up taking, and then got to make a decision from there. Um, you know, will he gray shirt? I, I don't think that's really in the cards. I think, I think a blue shirt uh, is a very possibility. Um, yeah, it's probably been discussed with him. Um, you know, blue shirt basically meaning uh, you will you will enroll in the summer, uh, in, well in August, and then uh, you'll play on the team, but you won't be you, know, you won't be counted on the scholarship until the following year. So I think that's a uh, I think that's a real possibility there, just based on the overall numbers. Uh, we'll wait and see how uh, how things shape out in February, and then uh, then Alabama will make a decision. Okay, uh, got a couple more questions for you uh, on some current signees that were part of the December signing period, but I want to go back before we do that and, and get back to J.J. Peterson because uh, I don't think there's any doubt had Pruitt stayed at Alabama, he would have, you know, he'd been in this class. You said he's coming in this Saturday. What do you think the chances are that Alabama is able to to ultimately land J.J. Peterson, or do you think he's pretty solid at Tennessee when all is said and done? Well, they, they've, got a, they've got a tough road ahead. Uh, I think he's moving in the Tennessee right now. Him. You know, on the fact that, you know, you come here, you're going to be able to play for, you know, championships, you've got an opportunity to play, they're going to go over the depth chart uh, with him and, and uh, you know, just try to see if they can they can sell the program to him. Um, you know, he has a very close relationship with Jeremy Pruitt, uh, the guys up there, he feels really comfortable uh, with everything up in Knoxville, but, 
Uh, you know, Alabama's got an opportunity to uh, you know really sell him just on the program and and uh, you know competing for championships. And you know we'll see how that goes. But in my opinion, as of right now, unless some major changes this weekend, he'll stick with Tennessee. I want to talk to you and get get your your opinion on some of the early signees from December, uh, the All Star Games, uh, U.S. Uh, Army All American Game, and the Under Armour All American Game, and, and talk to you about some guys that I, I I thought flashed. I want to start with Iabi Anoma, the defensive end out of Baltimore St. Francis Academy. I thought he was unblockable. I mean, uh, he's only played two years of football. His speed, his closing speed, is unbelievable. Long armed. Uh, we knew he was a, a outstanding prospect, but after watching him play in that game. Bowen, I you know I know he's got to put a little weight on, but I don't think there's any doubt he plays as a true freshman. Uh, tell me about this guy. He just absolutely, I thought, dominated defensively in that game. Yeah, you know, like you said, unblockable. I mean, just incredible speed, very fast. He had a great week overall. I mean, not just in the game, but but throughout throughout the week at practices, just really like you said, unblockable, extremely extremely fast, extremely quick, explosive. Um, you know, he's going to be one of those just terrors on the edge for Alabama. Head. That's going to be interesting to see what Alabama ends up doing with him. Will they will they end up putting him at an outside linebacker? Will they uh, let him play Jack? Um, you know, could he potentially grow into a defensive end? He's six foot five right now, 235, 240 pounds. I mean, he is just a uh, just an absolute terror. So I think he's got a chance to have a very special career in Tuscaloosa. Another player that flashed in that game that signed with Alabama on the other side was Xavier Williams, the, the wide receiver from Hollywood, Florida. Caught a touchdown, made a couple of other good catches, and it kind of reminded me of, uh, of uh, Ardarius Stewart uh, with his toughness, his ability to take contact. Uh, what do you think of Xavier Williams as a guy who could, who could even though Alabama's loaded at receiver, is a guy that could potentially play early? Well, I thought he had a great week uh, in Orlando catching the ball. And that was, that's kind of been the biggest knock. He's he's one of the fastest players in the country, if not the fastest. Um, uh, it always seems to get open, run smooth routes. But and every time I've seen him at, at different camps, he's, he's had a case of the drops. I mean, he just hasn't been able to hang on to the ball every time. And he'll catch about half the passes. Well, this past week or two weeks ago in Orlando, he caught just about everything thrown his way throughout the entire week. Had a great performance in the, in the All-Star game. And so I think he was really impressive. And, uh, you know, if he can continue to uh, to improve his hands, he's going to be a great weapon for Alabama here in the future. In the U.S. Uh, Army All-American game, Jalen Armour Davis, and we know Alabama needs help at corner immediately. They're, they're losing uh, both their starting cornerbacks. Uh, Jalen Armour Davis from St. Paul's Episcopal had an interception in that game. I've watched him in high school. I know that's a difficult position to play early in college, but is Jalen Armour Davis a guy that could uh, provide some immediate help and some depth in that secondary for Alabama this coming season? Well, I think the fact that, that he's already on campus, uh, he, he's going to be going through spring practice is, uh, is big for him. Uh, you know, he's got an opportunity to uh, you know come in and play, especially with uh, you know, Alabama losing what their, their top six defensive backs on the roster. So, you know, there's definitely some opportunity for playing time there. And, and uh, Jalen you know, had a great high school career. You know, he still needs to put on a little bit of weight, you know, only about 170, 175 pounds. So he needs to get a little bit bigger. But you know, very smooth, very fluid. Uh, you know, he's got a great, uh, you know, great athleticism, uh, great quickness. I think he's going to be a – I think he'll have a really good career in Tuscaloosa. He's got a uh, – you know, comes from a great high school football program. You know, won a state championship, and uh, yeah, I think he's. Uh, I think he's gonna be ready when he gets. To, uh, he's already there, but I think he'll be ready to contribute early for sure. Just a couple more things with Andrew Bone before we let him go here on the Gary Harris Show. A lot of folks are interested in in this final uh, signing period as far as a quarterback is concerned. You know, I've discussed this before. The majority of the big name 2018 high school quarterbacks have already signed. Uh, we know that coming up in 2019, it's a really good year in the state of Alabama with uh, Bo Nix, who's committed to Auburn, to Leah Tonga-Valoa from Thompson High School, younger brother of Tua, and of course Paul Tyson from Hewitt Trustful, plus some others. Uh, but now with a lot of, you know, uncertainty as far as you know what might happen with with Alabama at uh, quarterback if Jalen Hurts were to uh, to tr- transfer somewhere else, uh, do you think that puts pressure with Alabama only having three scholarship quarterbacks set to return? 
to sign a quarterback in this class this year? And do you think Alabama will? And if so, who are some guys they're looking at? Well, I think, I think they'd like to sign a quarterback. And, you know, they, they're still looking at a few guys. Uh, you know, James Foster out of uh, out of Montgomery is going to be taking an offensive to Alabama this weekend. And Alabama ha- definitely has some interest there. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, the big thing is, um, you know, does the, does Alabama bring in a new OC before this weekend? And, uh, you know, will will he decide? Oh, this is a quarterback that I want. Um, you know. A, Yes, has he been recruiting a quarterback from, uh, from from potentially elsewhere that we don't even know about yet? So you know, there's always the possibility of a new quarterback emerging because you know the new OC had been recruiting him for for whatever school he may be at. So uh, we'll see what happens. But James Foster is coming in this weekend. Um, you know, Alabama has been interested in him, but he has been uh, on the table for a long time. So uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Brock Purdy out of um, out of Arizona uh, had been the awesome and had a walk on opportunity at Alabama, and he's going to be coming into Tuscaloosa next weekend on the 26th. Uh, and I've th- I've heard that 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 could potentially turn into a um, to a regular scholarship offer. Alabama likes him a lot. Had a great senior season. Um, so those are two two quarterbacks they're looking at right now that could t- potentially get a green light to commit. Uh, but would not be surprised if another quarterback uh, in the course of the next week or two. Speaking of that offensive coordinator, you, you keep your you keep your ear close to the ground. You hear a lot of things. Um, you know, there's a candidate or two on the staff. You know, a couple other candidates. I've already mentioned their names. As far as um, scheme wise, you know, Nick Saban, even with Jalen, did not want to be tagged as a zone read team. He's gone to great lengths to to continue to be known as a pro-style offense. And now, of course, with Tua Tagovailoa stepping up the way he did, his ability to throw the football. Um, I know they want to have some some zone read principles in their offense and kind of kind of marry those two. But in your opinion, do you think he'll he'll stick with a coordinator that first and foremost is a, uh, you know, has that pro-style offensive coordinator designation attached to him? Oh, I think so. Um, you know, I'd be shocked if, uh, if we went another way. I mean, there's some... No, there's some good offense, and I, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's any doubt that, it, that Nick Saban's going to try to um, you know stick with his same scheme. And uh, you know, there's some guys that that he likes, some guys that we've been talking about on on them. And I'm sure you have as well. Um, you know, you know, guys like that, guys like Long at, at Notre Dame. You know, there's some other guys out there, but you know, those two hot names right now is really. Uh, Alabama is next, but uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I definitely hear a lot of talk regarding uh, Mike Lott since the last uh, the last twenty four hours. Um, and you know, he's a guy that you know, understands the system. Has been at Alabama a few years, and uh, I think he's you know, obviously a great recruiter, and you know, would be a big uh, you know, Alabama. Yep, indeed, great stuff as always from Andrew Bone. You can follow him. On Twitter, of course, and that, that's a way to get uh, get his updates, and he'll get uh, he can connect you through Twitter to BamaInsider.com. That's at Andrew J Bone, but also uh, Bama Insider, the Rivals Network, uh, all the information available there, Bone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's, gonna, it's a busy time of the year for us, and uh, we got about every you know every single day, no doubt.